welcome back to another video. Today we will be making a Rapunzel inspired ball gown from the Disney movie Tangled. This is one of my most requested dresses and after all this time I'm finally doing it. I will say that I am not making her screen accurate dress but I am making a ball gown based off of that dress. I do have plans to make a screen accurate dress in the future but I've had the idea of this ball gown in my head for so long and I'm just going to dive in and do that today. Here we have our fabric for this dress. Um, there is more to come, but this is what I'm working with so far and I am so excited to do this. Here is the sketch that I intend to base this dress off of. I made this quite a while ago and I'm so excited to finally be using it. I made it with watercolor and I'm pretty much going to try to keep this dress as accurate to the sketch as possible. Now let me explain what fabric I'm going to use for different parts of this. We have this pink and gold brocade. I'm kind of disappointed in the color of it. It's not as pink as it looked online and actually on camera it looks way less pink than in person. It looks kind of brown right here but I promise it is pink. Um, and that is going to be this underskirt right here. And then I got a purple lavender bridal satin. And that is what I'm going to be using for this purple overskirt and then the bodice. And then I've also gotten a beautiful 3D lace. And this is going to be overlaid on top of this so that we have a bit of a 3D effect and a bit of pink added to the outer skirt. And I might add it on the bodice too. I'm not really sure yet. And then finally for these sleeves, if you can see, I have a chiffon. But here's the fabric that I'll be using to create this sketch and I'm so excited to see what turns out. I started the process by cutting out a circle skirt with my brocade fabric and that is exactly what it sounds like. You're basically just cutting a huge circle out of your fabric. Um, for something like this where it is so wide you can fold it in half one way and then the other um, and then you just cut a quarter circle and then when you unfold it it is an entire circle and this is my favorite thing to do for ball gowns. And because I like to have a gathered waist, I make the waist circumference a lot larger than my actual waist so that you can gather it up. After this, I started working on the purple skirt, which is a half circle skirt, and I'm going to be covering it in that tool that you saw earlier and gluing flowers on it. Um, but I really liked this fabric. It is a nice bridal satin. I did forget to mention that I have her crown that I've been wearing while I sew, and it's really fun. Now, on another note, you know how I mentioned how the brocade fabric was not pink enough for my liking? Well, I thought I could just make it work and that it would be fine, but I really, really hate it. It just looks brown and I don't really think it goes with the purple fabric I bought or the 3D lace. So I've come up with something that I think will make it better that I didn't want to do, but I'm going to have to do it. See, this is what it looks like right now and it's not terrible, but it's not what I wanted. I wanted this underskirt to be more pink and it's more brown in person. So what I'm going to do is buy some tulle from Joann's because I can get it today and it's just going to be pink and I think I'll do a double circle skirt to get a lot of gathering done so that it will cover this so that way you'll still be able to see the pattern but it will hopefully be more pink. Now I'm working with this beautiful 3D lace that I got off of Etsy and I believe I got four yards and I'm just going to be gathering it into the waist. So it is now day two of making this dress and let me show you what I accomplished yesterday. This is what I got done. It's pretty much the top layered skirt. Um, all that's left is to add a waistband and to sew down. Oh, actually I did sew down the edges. Yeah, all I have to do is add a waistband and then this will be done. So next I am going to sew together the circle skirt that I made out of the brocade fabric. And then also I have to sew that skirt that I bought the tool for the tool to go over it because it's not the right color pink. So that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna finish this up. But it's really coming along and it's going faster than I thought it would. So I guess I'm just gonna cut out four half circle skirts which will equal to two circle skirts so that I'll have a lot of volume in it. There's my baby. Um, and yeah, I hate cutting tulle, so this will be a struggle, but it must be done. Okay, so I got all of the tulle skirts cut and sewn together, and I gathered it at the waist. And then I have the brocade fabric gathered at the waist, so I'm just going to sew these two together. I think it's going to work a lot better than what I was doing originally with just this fabric. And then I will add a waistband. 
Okay, so here's the first mock-up for the bodice for the Rapunzel dress, and I actually think it turned out really well. I don't think I'm gonna do another one just because I'll apply what I learned from this to the real thing, but I have these straps going down and I'm gonna fill out this area right here and there'll be puff sleeves. Um, and the back will just be a lace up back, but I think it looks good. I like where it's hitting up here. Um, the waist might need to get a little lengthened, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the real fabric. Now I'm moving on to the real bodice. So I have my bodice pieces here, or at least the fashion fabric, that I'm going to stitch together, and then I'll work on the lining. And once I have the two separate fashion and lining fabrics, I will put them together with the boning and everything like that. I just finished up finishing the bodice and the lining. I have the boning in here. Um, I might take a few of them out though right here. I'm not sure. Um, and then I haven't exactly finished this all the way. I'm going to do some ribbons in this. But now it's time to join them together, which is actually a lot easier than most people think. So basically I'm going to put them right sides together and sew along the neckline and then I'll flip it inside out and top stitch that down. Um, and then I'll go from there. It is now time to work on the sleeves. These are gonna be puffy sleeves. So what I have is the pattern with the blue satin and I've put some flowers on it just cause I thought it would be cute. And then I have these strips of fabric that I'm going to sew into tubes. And once they're sewn into tubes, there's going to be attached like so across it so that we have that kind of striped effect. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. The sleeves are now done and it's time to add them to the bodice. So what I'm gonna do is sew them together down this line so that it's one whole sleeve and then I'll go from there. There's no surprise that I forgot to finish filming the making of this dress, but here is the sleeve that I was talking to you about. I added elastic into the arm and then I added these long flowy sleeves, which if you remember at the beginning of the video, I had bought pink chiffon for it, but I cut it out wrong. So I had to use this instead which I think ended up being a happy accident because I like it even more than what it would have been. Um, but that's attached to the inside of the sleeve so they flow all the way to the floor. And then we have the flowers and it's just this beautiful puffiness. Here's the finished bodice. Um, I added lace to mimic the lace she has on hers. And then I have this ribbon that laces up. But this is it finished. Um, so let's go into the reveal. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and if you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this.